Um, I mean, there's not much that I frankly disagree with in a lot of what Bruce said. I am, as a nationalist conservative, uh, obviously I think the powers of the federal government have grown too big. Uh, I don't blame it all on war. Obviously, war to some degree is the health of the state. Everybody has known that. We knew this going back even to our founding fathers. But that's not the issue. The issue to me is, do we confront a legitimate threat? What is the primary purpose of government? It is to not, secu not only secure our blessings of liberty, but to protect us from enemies, foreign and domestic. That is the primary role of government. And so the question now that we have to ask ourselves is, do we face a legitimate threat from radical Islam? I believe we do. Uh, to me, the evidence is overwhelming. Now, let me just give you one example. I could go on and cite statistics, but let me tell you a personal story on my end. In 2005, I was off to France on a trip to Europe with my wife. My wife is, used to be a professor of European history at Howard University. So we had a lot of African-American students and we wanted to show them the cultural, historical heritage of France. And so there we are in France. And of course, what have you been reading about in France? The rise in the domestic Muslim population there. What they call les banlieues, the suburbs, where you have uh, huge Muslim neighborhoods uh, many of them, the police fear to go in. You have constant rioting, what the French call literally their domestic intifada. And so we go to what is called Le Grand Mosque de Paris, the Great Mosque of Paris. And it's right there in Paris. And we walk, and literally I felt like I was in the Middle East. Blocks and blocks and blocks of women wearing burqas, covered head to toe, men with their beards. I didn't hear French spoken. I heard nothing but Middle Eastern languages. We come into the mosque, and there I am with my wife and my students, and we meet the Imam. And I said, hi, sir, excuse me, we're from Washington, DC. I'm at, from the Washington Times. My wife is a professor at Howard. We have these students. We're here to learn about Islam in France, and what is the story of the Muslims in France? We're reading a lot about it in the United States. Right away, he gives me this look. You're from Washington? You must know George Bush. I don't know, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. I cover George Bush. I don't know George Bush. He's like, no, no, no. Tell your wife and your students to leave. Women are not allowed in this mosque. And then he goes to me, come. You want to find out about Muslims in France? He goes, come. And he takes me downstairs to a bathhouse. And literally, there were nothing but men in their 20s and 30s, young men. And I walk in, of course. I'm the only white American there. The hatred on their eyes. You could feel it. I have been around the world. Believe me, I've covered war zones. I've seen hate. I've never seen hate like this. And they're washing their feet. And the Imam goes to me, look around you. These are our holy warriors. These are our mujahideen. Their feet are clean. Their souls are clean. Their bodies are clean. Their minds are clean. Look at you Americans with your pornography and your drugs and your homosexuality and everything that you are spreading across the world and you want to spread that degenerate culture on our soil it goes to be on our land on our civilization no way no way he said you tell george bush from me afghanistan will be your graveyard and then iraq and after that we are coming for you in america and that's when I realized, it crystallized in front of me. It's not our foreign policy that's driving radical Islamists. It isn't. They attacked us on 9-11. We weren't in Afghanistan. When they, in the 1990s, when they hit us in the World Trade Center, when they hit us at Kobar Towers, when they hit our embassies in East Africa, is it because of our foreign policy? No. It's one reason. The bigger reason is this. They despise America for everything that we stand for. And if you look at history, this is what I find remarkable. If you look at the study of history as a historian, as somebody who taught at McGill University, as somebody, believe me, who's well learned in European history and Middle Eastern history, look at the roots of Islam itself. How was it born in the Middle East? It spread by the sword. It ethnically cleansed Jews and Christians all across from the Middle East. 
and then it spread into Spain, into Portugal, into southern France, into Italy, into the Balkans, right into Vienna. So when bin Laden says that he wants to create a world Muslim empire based on a global caliphate, he's not making this up from the top of his head. We're not in search of monsters to destroy. As if, hmm. As if, as if after 9-11, I was sitting around in my room in the, news, in the newsroom saying, hmm, we got attacked on 9-11. What monster should I look for to slay? Because, you know, I miss the Cold War. I miss the good old days. I need an evil Russian to go and slay. But I don't have an evil Russian. Oh, let's topple Saddam for the sake of toppling Saddam. I, I need a monster. No. It's because radical Islam declared war upon us. 3,000 Americans were slaughtered that day. They are waging jihad in Iraq. They're waging jihad in Afghanistan. Look at Pakistan. Look at Chechnya. Look at Somalia. Look at Sudan. Look at Yemen. Look at the Philippines. Look at Indonesia. My God, my, my paper broke numerous stories. Hezbollah has penetrated our southern border. They're finding, yes, we have a huge problem with illegal immigration. Believe me, nobody wants to enforce the border more than Jeff Winner. But it's not just an illegal invasion from Mexico or Latin America. We are finding thousands of Qurans and prayer rugs along the border. Intelligence officials have told me there are so many terrorist cells now infiltrating into the United States through our porous southern border. So the question is this, do you believe that if we retrench from the world, if we come into a fortress America, if we recede into a fortress America, that this will somehow keep us safe. It won't. My friends, the issue is not whether in a, where we are in a war. The issue is this. Do we fight them there or do we fight them here? And if we fight them here, believe me, many more American citizens will die. And that's why we have to fight them there. Now, this idea of permanent war, as if somehow a nationalist conservatives like myself sit around and say, oh boy, we need a good war. Let's just keep a good war going here. You know? No. <clears throat> Look, what we are fighting is very simple. It is a universalist totalitarian <clears throat> ideology. And what you have to do is you have to break the back of this ideology. You have to destroy their state sponsors, and you have to defeat them in the places where they plan the attacks upon America. That's Afghanistan. That's Iraq. The biggest threat now is Iran. To me, it is remarkable. Here you have the Hitler of our time, who is openly in speech after speech. I mean, it's there in public, in private. Not only will he wipe Israel off the face of the earth, as he has said it, I can imagine a world without America. First we destroy the little Satan, Israel, and then the great Satan. He has forged alliances with Venezuela with Putin's Russia, with China. We have Hezbollah cells in the United States. Do you honestly think if Israel and Iran go to war that we are not gonna be drawn in, that there aren't gonna be attacks upon American soil? So again, the question is this, do you wait for attacks to come to you? Do you wait for thousands of Americans to die? Or do you preempt those attacks before they happen? Let me tell you right now, if you could turn the time machine back, if I could get into some time machine and go back in time, would I assassinate Adolf Hitler in 1938? Damn it, you better believe it. And if Bruce said, you know what, this was, Jeff, we're gonna have to send you to prison. On their due process, put me in prison, baby. I'll spend my whole life in prison. To kill that madman, to prevent 50 million dead, to prevent the Holocaust, you better believe it. And so that's the choice that we now face with Ahmadinejad in Iran. We cannot bury our heads in the sand and somehow pretend this is a law enforcement matter. It isn't. We treated that in the 1990s, and look what it got us. Law enforcement led us to 9-11. Since 9-11, we have stopped every major attack on American soil. That makes me feel better as a nationalist, as a conservative, and as American.